The Bob Hub Club is proudly brought to you by Kayana Photography, Fully Sick Bags and The Pregnant Book. Hi and welcome to the Bub Hub Club. I'm Brad Lauder, your host and co-founder of the Bub Hub, Australia's leading independent parenting website. The Bub Hub site offers a wealth of information and advice on countless parenting topics from conception, pregnancy, birth, babies and beyond. In this six-part series, we'll be looking at some of the big parenting issues. We'll be chatting to experts and answering real questions from real Aussie parents. This episode is all about that first step on the parenting journey pregnancy. Welcome back. Now, I can't say that I've experienced the joys of pregnancy firsthand but I have to say that I feel, uh, having run the site for a long period of time, that I have a lot of information about the pregnancy issue. It is a time when many women find themselves in unknown territory, particularly the first time, searching for advice. We have so many questions asked on the Bub Hub Forum, especially on the topic of pregnancy health. How do you stay healthy during pregnancy? What are some tips on reducing morning sickness? What food should you avoid? And how much exercise is okay? In this episode, we're going to be talking to the experts and answering some of these questions. Our first guest is Kate DePrima. Kate is an accredited practicing dietitian, author, and spokesperson for the Dietitians Association of Australia. She has 21 years experience and specializes in pediatrics and family nutrition. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Brad. Kate, when women fall pregnant, one of the first questions they have is about which foods they're not allowed to eat. Can you tell us what foods pregnant women should avoid and why? Well, look, there are some foods that contain a bacteria called listeria. For you and I, in a non-pregnant state, we can actually consume those without any sort of fear of actually contracting any sort of illnesses. Mm -hmm. But for a pregnant woman, the unborn baby, listeria can be quite dangerous. Mm -hmm. So these tend to occur in things like white, fresh cheeses, raw fish, pâtés, um, uncooked fish, um, and salads that tend to sort of be in those salad bars, you know, where the spoon goes from salad to oh, salad. Yes. So, so, look, my advice to women is not to get too panicky about it, mm -hmm. but cook fresh, yep. wash off your, your salads and your vegetables well, cook to a high temperature, and if you're going to use leftovers, really cook them up or sort of heat them up again so they're steaming, because heat kills the listeria bacteria. Okay, and, and that's the thing, it's, it's uh, what can affect your baby rather than... Exactly. Per se. Um, and what about weight gain? How much weight should women gain during pregnancy? Well, look, this is totally dependent on, on the woman. The average weight gain is between 10 and 13 kilos. So if you break that down over trimesters, it's about two or three kilos in the first trimester, four to five kilos in the second, and four to five kilos in the last. But I know, look, having experienced two pregnancies as well, you know, you can get a bit caught up in the whole weight sort of issue. Yeah. Your, your um, uh, obstetrician will actually guide you on that, or your GP and your, your nurse will tell you. But, you know, it, it really is, the, the growth of the baby sort of really does start to happen in that last trimester. Mm -hmm. How, uh, is, it ever, is it ever safe to tell a woman while they're, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say that because uh, I'm going to get into trouble. So I'm going to, uh, you, see, you see, there's never a good time to say, look, I think you're putting on a bit too much weight yeah. ever for a woman ever. Oh, wow. So we're going to skip that question completely. And thank you, Rebecca, for writing it. <laughs> I'm in trouble. So, but the people always say you're eating for two, but that's not strictly true, is it? There is, there is two of you, I guess, for a good nine months. Mm -hmm. And look, I know there are some people that love to use it as an excuse for, uh, to eat for two. But essentially... I'm going to earn points here by not bringing up my sister. <laughs> yes. And the thing is, it, you only really need an extra serve of, of carbohydrate, an extra serve of protein and calcium. So really, throughout your whole pregnancy, you, you, can only, you only need about the equivalent of a cheese sandwich. So there's not a lot of kilojoules that, that you actually do need to increase. But look, every woman is different again. So yeah. if you are carrying a little bit of extra weight, yeah. your weight gain may not be as sort of uh, as much as, the, as someone who's a little bit on the underweight side. Right. But the thing about weight gain, Brad, is that around that 26 week mark, you get a test for gestational diabetes. And if you've really put a lot of weight on board, 
you can sort of really run the risk of sort of being a bit insulin de de uh, deficient and um, developing gestational diabetes in that last couple of weeks. Mm, okay. And, and what does that mean in, in real terms? How much extra food is, are we really talking about? I think you mentioned a, a cheese, a cheese sandwich. sandwich. And look, you know, if, you, you, if a cheese sandwich isn't your fare, a smoothie and an extra piece of fruit right. is, is all you, you probably really do need. Okay. I mean, some women come into me and they've got, you know, terrible sickness and so they're not even getting close, but they still develop very, very healthy bubs and at, at good weight. Okay. So look, get some good advice from an accredited practicing practicing dietitian or your GP if you're worried about, about weight gain and how much to actually have. So again, it's, it's another one of those things, you know, first time parents, it's something to stress about that you really shouldn't worry about that much. If, you, if you're eating, uh, you know, if you're eating a few more times than you, you're used to eating, yes. great. Exactly. You know, but don't stress about it. And if you are worried, there are lots of professionals to talk to so that you don't and you have to stress. you see them monthly and second weekly leading yes. up to it. So you've, you've got someone looking over you a lot. Absolutely. Is there anything women can do while pregnant to get nutritionally ready for those early weeks with bub? Well, look, you know, I think it's quite a shock for the average woman to come home with a new baby and have a lovely fridge full of, you know, ingredients, but no food prepared. Mm. So if you can get a family member to cook up a couple of meals and freeze them, yep. if you can get a great smoothie recipe and get your husband or, or someone to make that up in whoa, the morning. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> the husband has to do some work? Absolutely. Oh, well, I can't believe or that. Or maybe the husband can hold the baby while you make yourself a smoothie, and at least that's in the fridge all day well, they could probably for you to pour some things. Yeah. But I know the poor mum who has the cup of tea and the toast that goes up and down in the, in the toaster, there's not a lot of nourishment in that for those no. first couple of weeks. Absolutely, and, and it's good to just get as much nutrition in as possible. Do you have any tips for what foods women should pack into their bag for hospital? Well, do you know, the hospital bag's quite good fun. You know, you put your, your, your some clothes in there and you put your cards in there for your partner. Um, but, you know, something <laughs> something like, you we know... We men get very bored waiting for you women to have, I know. Well, I know. And, and some women, you know, it's all over and done with in a couple of hours. But for some women, it can be 24 hours. Now, I know there are some places that you can go and buy sandwiches and things. Mm. But look, you know, a little packet of fruit and nuts, a couple yep. of muesli bars, maybe some little sort of glucose lollies like some jelly bean type things okay. a popper a juice popper okay. just because if you need something quickly Absolutely. and I've been through two pregnancies and two de deliveries when you need something you need it quickly oh, so oh, if it's in the now <laughs> green vomit excuse me my wife did that once the, the, the midwife jumped I, I kid you not about three feet in the air and bolted from the room because she used a voice that I've never heard before or since thank goodness but exactly. yes that's so. important uh, now we've also got uh, you know, the questions with, with the healthy pregnancy, and, and there's a lot of stress in the forum I see from mums really getting worried about all the different things and, and taking advice from all different areas. What's the best place to get advice from? Look, the best place to is, is your GP, mm -hmm. definitely. I mean, a site like yours as well that mm -hmm. has trained professionals giving that good advice. Yep. Um, the Dietitians Association of Australia has a fantastic website. Right. Um, but, you know, speak to your pharmacist as well because if you're looking for supplements like a folic acid or an omega-3 or an iron supplement, they can give you the best advice if you're taking any other medication mm -hmm. as well. So go to professionals who know what they're talking about. Yeah. So, again, as we will say, I think, a few times, throughout this series I'm very confident the, the most important thing is not to panic not to panic not to panic and to relax it's it's a natural process it, it feels scary the first time we completely understand but it's really important to to really make the most of the journey and to relax as much as possible because it's very difficult to relax while you're clenched. <laughs> exactly. And remember, millions of women have done it yes. all around the world. Absolutely. And many without and, any And most advice. men are peripherally involved at <laughs> best. Um, if you can whip your partner into helping, that would be great. Thanks, Kate. Kate will be back to answer some questions from our forum members at the end of the show. But after the break, we'll be talking about fitness and exercise during pregnancy. Welcome back. We're now joined by women's health physio, Paula Hindle. Paula has been working as a women's health physio for the past nine years, and she runs her own obstetric physiotherapy clinic, Yummy Mummy Physio. She has a passion for enhancing the pregnancy and postnatal experience for all women. Paula is also mum to two children, a three and a half year old and a 16 month old, which if you can do your maths means that for four or five years, Yummy Mummy Physio was a complete misnomer. Welcome. How are you going, Paula? Good, thank you, Brad. So, Paula, why should women exercise while pregnant? Does it help with labour at all? There's lots of reasons women should exercise during pregnancy. Mm -hmm. First of all, it helps just to give you some energy. You know, first trimester, you're really tired, 
lugging your body around. Um, gives you lots of energy, gets some endorphins pumping, just like a normal exercise class. Mm -hmm. uh, body changes a lot with pregnancy, so it's good to exercise to maintain your posture and keep your body strong. Um, exercising the pelvic floor, obviously, is very important. Absolutely. Um, tends to help people uh, not to get back pain and pelvic pelvic joint pain during pregnancy so you tend to feel a little bit more comfortable if you've exercised through your pregnancy absolutely with regards to labor i guess there's no <laughs> well, hard... labor's easy there's there's <laughs> no hard work in labor don't worry about that <laughs> there's no hard evidence to say it's going to be shorter or yeah. any less painful but certainly as i know you may not know this labor's very physically demanding on the body so if you can maintain a good level of aerobic exercise you tend to get through labor a lot better yep. and recovery is definitely a lot better if you're fitter yeah absolutely Re recovery is always helped when you when you've got some fitness um i recovered very well after the, the oh, three pregnancies um, it, it was good um, hillary just didn't beat me up too much so that was <laughs> nice when women first become pregnant what do they need to be aware of before they start exercising yeah, sure. There's certain guidelines that you have to be aware of. The most important thing is the intensity of your exercise, mm -hmm. so not getting your heart rate up too high. Yeah. We tend to talk about the talk test more so than heart rate, so as long as you can have a bit of a chat while you're exercising, the intensity shouldn't be too high. Mm, see, I um, go to a gym and they can chat whether they're dying or not. <laughs> but, but okay, we'll, we'll use the talk test as a, as a baseline. Um, uh, you've got to be careful with abdominal exercises that right. you're doing, so not doing the traditional sit-ups, crunches, things like that, mm -hmm. but learning how to engage your deep abdominal muscles, yep. so drawing the lower part of your tummy back into the spine, holding up the pelvic what floor as you're exercising. What sort of exercises would that be? It's very simple. It's basically just relaxing your abdominal muscles. Mm -hmm. You can do it in any position and pra practicing just drawing the lower part of your tummy back mm. to the spine. It provides a nice corset effect around the pelvis, okay. supporting around the baby at the front too. I'm very, so very good at good. relaxing my abdominals, obviously. So. <laughs> the other things, I guess, are not lying on your back for too long with exercise, just like we advise people not to sleep on their back during pregnancy. Okay. Paula, are there some people who just shouldn't exercise while pregnant? people who shouldn't exercise. Generally, you should just be guided by the doctor or the midwife, mm -hmm. listen to their suggestions. But as a rule, uh, if you've had any bleeding during your pregnancy, if there's any threat of miscarriage, obviously, mm -hmm. um, certain serious lung or heart diseases, they advise not to exercise. Yeah. Um, they're the main things, really, right. but I guess be guided by the doctor if you start to develop high blood pressure during pregnancy, preeclampsia. Mm -hmm. Uh, if the placenta is over the cervix, often later in pregnancy, they'll advise you don't exercise. What, what if you didn't exercise much before you got pregnant? Now, I'm sure all of our mums are exercise buffs, but let's be clear, that's highly unlikely. How do you ease into it? Yeah, absolutely. It's best if you have an exercise, certainly to wait till the 12 week mark before you start an exercise program. And then just keeping it very simple. So a simple walking program, walking a couple of days a week, swimming in the pool is quite good. Summer, and swimming in summer, swimming always certainly good. in summer is very good. Takes the weight off your body too. Obviously the buoyancy of the water, you feel weightless for a little while, yes. which is lovely. Uh, and even just a gentle yoga or Pilates class where mm -hmm. It's not very taxing on your body, but you're no. learning how to do pelvic floor exercises correctly, yeah. learning how to use your tummy, lots of stretching, um, and even just a bit of breathing awareness, which helps, obviously, when you get into labour. Absolutely. If you, if you haven't exercised before, now's the time. If you've gotten pregnant for the first time, trust us, it will help. And even I know this, and I'm a boy. Now, there's one exercise that I've heard is quite important, the pelvic floor exercises. Do all pregnant women need to do these? Absolutely all pregnant women need to do these. I really that. really all women need to do these Absolutely. exercises. We know from research, unfortunately, one in three women who have ever had a baby wet themselves. Um, we know 50% of women can't actually activate their pelvic floor muscles correctly just by giving a verbal cue or mm -hmm. reading a pamphlet, for example. Right. So I think it's one of the most important things when you find out that you're pregnant, that you need to go and find out how to do these exercises yeah. correctly. And you and can do them anywhere. You can do them anywhere. That's the benefit. People don't know you're doing them. Absolutely. You can be doing them just yeah. at home. I can be doing them right now. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can do them in the car. It, it's, it's, but it's really, really important. I, I, we asked this question because we wanted every everyone to be very clear on just how important the pelvic floor is. So what about after the baby is born? How soon can women return to exercise? As a general rule, six weeks is the time that we recommend that you can return to exercise. Right. Before this, obviously, going back to pelvic floor, we'd like you to start doing your pelvic floor exercises after either vaginal delivery or a caesarean. You mm -hmm. can start working on those muscles straight okay. away. Um, Best to wait to the six-week checkup once you've seen your doctor or the midwife. Get the all clear then. Um, and you have to think about if you're having any 
conditions that are carrying on after pregnancy. So again, if you've yeah. had any pelvic floor problems, if you've had any back pain that needs to be addressed, yeah. if you've had an abdominal separation, things like that will slow down getting back into exercise. Be sensible, people. Be, be sensible, sensible, that's right, and get the right advice. But other than that, if you're not having any problems from six weeks, you can even start jogging if you wanted to, as long as you're not having any of those issues arise right. once you start. What, what about caesareans? I mean, really, obviously, that's different to a, a, a vaginal birth. So. What do you really need to keep an eye on there? Yeah, so the recovery is obviously a little bit slower after a caesarean. Again, we generally recommend the six-week mark. Uh, the wound healing is the most important thing there, so making sure you get the all clear from the doctor that the wound has healed nicely. Um, from then, it's a little bit slower, so you'll start with the tummy activating, activating those deep abdominal muscles and pelvic floor and just slowly progressing from there as pain allows. Oh. And this is a question I really don't want to know the answer to, but what if they've had an abdominal separation? <laughs> abdominal separation. There's a lot of research at the moment being done into the abdominal separation. So it's definitely something that needs to be assessed on a one-to-one uh, situation. So, so see your professional. Yeah, see your professional after that one. Um, it's looking like it's not so much how big the separation is, but how well you're able to activate the abdominal corset again after giving birth. So okay. that's, that's definitely a one-to-one -one situation that okay. should be assessed. Get it checked. Get it checked. After the break, we'll be taking questions from our forum members and putting them to our pregnancy health experts. So don't go away. Welcome back. We're talking with pregnancy health experts, Kate DePrima and Paula Hindle. We've chatted about nutrition, healthy eating, and the importance of safe exercise. Now we have some questions from real parents, BubHub members who have posted their pregnancy health concerns on the forum. We'll cross to Kat, one of the BubHub team members, who has picked a few of these questions to put to our experts. Kat? Hi, ladies. We've got a couple of questions from parents on our forum. The first is, do I really need pregnancy supplements? They all make me feel sick and my doctor said I could just take folic acid and iron. Is this true? Well, look, you know, pregnancy supplements are important, especially folic acid, because this, the studies have been done on uh, this B-group vitamin for your healthy bub's development. But we do know that um, folate has been added to most flours, so we do actually have that in our cereals and flours in our, in our um, food supply. But the best thing to do is check with, with your GP. Um, the other thing is omega-3s uh, are important too. So, look, if you want to see if you're getting everything from your diet, keep a diet history and get your GP or an accredited practising dietitian to check over it to see if you're actually getting those, those requirements. Otherwise, just a supplement um, that's specific for what deficits you might be having is, is definitely important. Great. What are the restrictions on exercise for women who are already really fit? I, I normally do four intense workouts a week. Weights, body pump, body attack, RPM, studio Pilates, reformer Pilates. I'd really like some precise info about what you cannot do and why not. Go back to the guidelines that we were talking about before with pregnancy exercise. So if you're someone who's quite fit already, the main guideline is really looking at the intensity of your exercise. So they say not to get your heart rate above 150 beats per minute. If you can really just use the talk test. So we like to tell people that if you can still talk while exercising, then generally your intensity won't be up there too high. The problem with working at a high intensity is that more of your blood supply will be moving away from the baby towards your muscles to supply the exercise. So so that's why it's really important just to make sure that you can still be talking while you're exercising. Another thing with general Pilates classes, for example, choosing the abdominal exercises that you're doing is very important. If you're using your upper abdominal muscles a little bit too much, they can actually separate during pregnancy. So it's important to leave out the traditional exercises in Pilates like tummy crunches. Anything that causes your abdomen to be bulging forward during an exercise is not appropriate. Um, very important to be learning how to activate your deep abdominal muscles and using your pelvic floor correctly during exercise. So again, just sticking to those general guidelines, then you should be fine. Thank you. Kate, whenever we go out for lunch, I order a hamburger. But since I've been pregnant, I've stayed away from them because I heard cold salad should be avoided. Is this true? Well, look, this comes back to that uh, question of listeria. And so if you're eating from a reputable area and you can see that the salad has been washed and there's no harm in actually checking with them to see if they've actually got good food handling uh, processes in their place. But if you're worried, at all worried, maybe make a, the ha turn the hamburger into like a toasted sandwich so you've got some heat going through because heat kills the listeria bacteria. But look, many of our, our outlets that um, we have here in Australia, they do actually operate with good food handling. So you generally should be okay 
um, having that hamburger, just ask them if they've washed their salad. On to our next question. Before being pregnant, I played soccer. Obviously, contact sports are out now, but I would love to get back into soccer after Bubba's here. When will it be okay to get back into training and how soon can I play again? What can I do in the meantime to maintain strength and fitness? Yeah, that's a very common question with return to sport. Generally, they say you can start exercising six weeks after having your baby. The main things to think about are firstly, pelvic floor can be an issue. So um, if you start doing any jogging or running, anything that's a little bit higher intensity, as long as you're not having any issues with leakage or not feeling any heaviness in the pelvic floor, then that's okay. The other considerations are if you've got any back or pelvic pain still lingering from pregnancy, then it's best to modify the exercise a little bit more, possibly speak to your physio about what exercises are appropriate until that back pain has resolved. And the other issue, of course, is if you've had an abdominal separation. So all of those things really need to be resolved before you start any exercise program or something a little bit higher intensity. But again, if you haven't had any of those problems from six weeks, you can basically get started as soon as you like. So starting with just some general jogging, gradually building up as your fitness allows, maybe start with some soccer skills training and then gradually getting back into games after that. Kate, I know you touched on supplements earlier, but this future mum has asked, I'm worried about getting enough omega-3 while pregnant. I know fish and eggs are recommended, but they make me gag. Do you have any ideas to ensure I reach the recommended amount each day? Well, look, the, the recommended amount of omega-3s that the National Heart Foundation recommends is about 500 milligrams. Um, and look, we do know that fish uh, and seafood are the best sort of uh, sources of this, as well as eggs. But not many people know that red meat actually is a very good source of omega-3s. And the other one is your walnuts. So nuts are fantastic because they're fantastic protein and they, they keep you feeling full for longer during your pregnancy. Um, and you can have those sort of uh, after you're pregnant as well. But look, the thing is, if you're not getting any of these foods, it is really important to possibly look into having a supplement and you can buy these just over the counter in the pharmacy and they're purely and utterly safe. Great. I've received opposing advice on whether I could keep running while pregnant. I stopped at three months as a physio told me it wasn't good for me or my pelvic floor but I've seen pregnant ladies running a lot later. Is running okay? Yeah, there's a lot of mixed advice out there about this one and it's definitely a grey area. Um, a few things to consider, again, if you're not a runner, I absolutely wouldn't advise starting running during pregnancy, obviously, not that most people would want to. Um, but if you're an experienced runner, uh, it's OK to keep going. It definitely puts more strain onto the pelvic floor. So that's definitely the biggest issue. But again, just be guided by what your body's telling you. If you're feeling any downward pressure in the pelvic floor area running or you're having any leakage, you absolutely should stop. Um, the other thing is, depends on the temperature. I, I definitely think if it's, if it's summer in Brisbane, even 5.30 in the morning running is just too hot. Um, so just take those considerations into account. Great. I've res uh, our final question. I am five weeks pregnant with my first and I've been so hungry. If I don't eat every one or two hours, I feel really nauseous. Is this normal? What foods could I eat to help? Look, this is absolutely normal. The, the hunger that you're feeling um, is sort of a, an acid in your stomach, plus your blood sugars are dropping very, very quickly. And the one way to bring those back up again is the slow-release carbohydrate-style foods. So a piece of raisin toast or a piece of multigrain toast with a little bit of peanut butter or a bit of French toast with an egg actually inside it. This is good protein and good carbohydrate to give you that sort of sustaining blood sugar rise. But look, there, there's not a problem. You, will, you actually have to eat a little bit more during pregnancy. So having a few more free frequent meals keeps your blood sugars a little more stable and you won't feel that nausea as much. Thank you so much ladies, that's all the time we have for questions today. Well that's all for this episode, our very first. Thanks to our guests Kate De Prima and Paula Hindle. Kate has two private practices and has written a number of cookbooks which you should check out. Paula runs her own obstetric, <laughs> obstetric physiotherapy clinic. Yummy Mummy Physio, which I can personally recommend. Visit our website for all the details. Remember, if you have any questions about your pregnancy, you can ask them on the Bub Hub forum, along with countless other pregnancy and parenting to topics. The Bub Hub is Australia's leading independent parenting website with a comprehensive directory, and with more than 100,000 forum members talking about anything and everything, you'll be sure to find whatever it is you're looking for. Tune in next week when we discuss early feeding, Remember that every journey is different and that you are not alone.
Love Club is proudly brought to you by Kayana Photography, Fully Sick Bags and The Pregnant Book.